Let me show you how I scaled this Shopify store up to $475,000 in 30 days. What's going on everybody? This is AC and again, appreciate everybody for coming back to my channel. For my lovely subscribers who have came back, again, welcome back to my channel. And for all of you new guys, welcome to the Supreme family. And today I'm gonna give you a value packed video. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering how I did $475,000 in 30 days off of one singular Shopify store. This one singular Shopify store was actually last month in April. So I'm not showing you old products. I'm not gonna be showing you old methods. This is exactly what you need to be doing to be successful at dropshipping at this exact time right now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna bring you into my actual Shopify store so you can see these results. I'm gonna bring you into my ad account and be able to show you how I set up everything. And then also I'm gonna be giving you the exact strategies on how to implement this same process. And a lot of people will show you numbers and a lot of people will show you guys, you know, the revenue they made. I'm going to be doing that. But again, I'm also going to show you the profit that comes with it. It's important to understand that this is a profit game and not a revenue game. And there's so many individuals I see that are gurus on the internet and they're not showing you profit. And I want to put you guys in a position to understand that this entire game of dropshipping is about making money. So as you guys can tell, this is $474,000 made in a single month. So I'm going to refresh the screen for you. Again, this is last month. So this is April. As you can see, it says comparing to the month before that, which is March 2020. So again, these are live results. $474,000 made. There's 12,000 orders right here. And that online store conversion rate was about 3.32%. So overall, this was a very, very amazing month, but I know I showed you guys revenue. So let me be able to show you guys the actual profit. So when I was originally scaling this store, it was very profitable. It was around 20 to 30%. Obviously within 30 days, I scaled this up pretty hard. Um, so the profit margins are not that high, but as you guys can see, this is the same amount of sales and the net margin was 13% and I went home with $60,000 in profit. So in the month of April, I went home with $60,000 in net profit after all expenses. As you guys can see, it says cost of goods cost me $153,000. Um, the ad spend was $246,000. And after all of the ad spend, and after the cost of goods, and after the taxes, and after the fees, net profit is 60000 for the month of April. And now I'm going to be able to show you guys the same results on my ads manager. But if you've scaled a lot up on Facebook ads, now all of the conversions are going to be tracked. But here you guys can see the $246,000 that was spent on ad spend. Um, with the return of 443,000 it says, but obviously we know that is 475,000, um, which gives me a higher return on ad spend of around 1.98. So 1.98 is what I averaged throughout this entire campaign. Um, and my break even was actually 1.47. So it actually was not too bad. And how I find my break even is in a KPI calculator. This KPI calculator is available in my course. You don't have to do any work. You just plug and go. If you have it available in my course now, you should be implementing it. But let's go ahead and check out that KPI calculator to understand the margins. So as you guys can tell, it was $37 that I was selling this product for. The average cost of goods for myself was 11.5. And my profit target was actually 20%. So in this KPI calculator it shows the break even and the um, percentage that you want to get to. So my break even, as I stated earlier, was 1.47. Um, that was to be able to make you know zero money. And if I wanted to do 20%, it was at 2.09. And like I said, I was averaging about 1.98. So guys, these are live results. This is live profit. This is live KPI measurements. So you guys can see what's really going on. And I'm ready to show you how I implemented this stuff into my Shopify store, how I implemented this into my Facebook ads, and how I was able to make this 475,000 in one single month. So let's go ahead and get an overview of kind of how I structured this from the very beginning to the end. So my overview, it starts with creative testing. We then go into interest testing. We go into creative testing again, um, and then we go into retargeting, lookalikes, and then next and final is CBO scaling. And if you guys love videos like this, make sure you guys smash that like button below. Go ahead and turn on those alert options for the videos each week. And lastly, subscribe to my channel. 
All right, the first thing that I do is creative testing. I don't see a lot of people starting off this way, but this is a way to be able to save time, money, and effort. So what most people do is they will find, you know, a creative that they want to test and they immediately go ahead and throw it into an interest campaign. Well, if it doesn't work, then you kind of screw yourself over. So what I do is I test creatives out first to know that I have something that is winning and something that is worth actually being tested. And then I throw it into my interest campaign. So that is how I start off with creative testing. So basically when I go ahead and test out these three different creatives, what I do is find, you know, one video and I can maybe change out the scroll stoppers or I can change out the thumbnail or I might have just three different videos in general or I just might change the ad copy. I'm just testing out these multiple creatives and then after about a day, I will go ahead and overview the results. And with the results, what I'm looking for is to look at the cost per click, the click through rate and the cost per thousand impressions and seeing if the metrics are within the guidelines that I'm looking for. So I want the lowest cost per click, I want the highest click through rate, and I want the lowest cost per 1,000 impressions. And usually that is the winning ad. And after I have found this winning ad, I go into the next step in the cycle, which is now interest testing. And with interest testing, the only thing I'm doing is 10 interests and 10 different ads with my winning creative. So right now, the only thing I'm trying to do is find winning audiences and be able to build that data up. I will be running this for about three days. Now, again, this is based off of the amount that you're spending per each ad set. So if you're setting it at $10 a day, you should be running for about three days. If you're doing about $20 a day, it's going to be turned off a little bit quicker because again, you're spending more and vice versa. If you're only doing about $5 a day, you'll probably have to run it a little bit longer. And I'll let these run and I'll be able to throw in new interests every single night too. I kind of test it out a bunch of interest as much as I could because I just really wanted to find out that winning audience. After I found these winning audiences, I just kept horizontally scaling. Horizontally scaling is the method of basically taking suggestions from the winning audiences that you already have and making them work even better for you. So for example, if I'm going to be focusing on diaper as my first interest and I'm noticing that it's going to be doing really well, I might take a suggestion from that and it might be Pampers. And Pampers might be the next winning audience because it's a suggestion from the first one that did really well. Now remember, this time right now is all about building data. You need to be building data. You need to be testing out different variations of audiences and figuring out if this product is worth being tested or not. So after a couple of days of doing this, I went into my warm and hot retargeting. And what I did with these warm and hot retargeting is I threw them in CBOs. So what warm retargeting is, is everybody who has never visited your site is going to put these individuals in a custom audience of people. So kind of like a group of people that took an action that you're looking for. So with warm retargeting, again, these are people who did not go to your store. So these are people who watch your video 95% through, people who watch your video 75% through, people who engage with your Facebook and people who engage with your Instagram. These are not people who click shop now and went to your store. So hot retargeting is all the people who actually took the action of going to your store and clicking that shop now button, website visiting, view content, add to cart, etc. So my warm retargeting was again, exactly what I just stated. So warm retargeting, hot retargeting, 95% video viewers and 75% video viewers. You're going to have to exclude a couple things to make sure that you're not overlapping the same people. Um, and again, this can all be found in my course. So for a limited time only, and this is time to take action right now, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram right here above. What you need to do is follow me on it at AC underscore Hampton. And if you have any questions at all, go ahead and DM me the word YouTube. If you have any questions about my course, about getting started, drop shipping, etc., go ahead and message me the word YouTube and me and my team will get right to you. But you need to make sure that you're following me first. And my hot retargeting was the website visitors, basically excluding people who added to cart. And the last one was add to cart, excluding people who purchase. So what warm retargeting, the best thing that you can be doing is reminding them the incentive that you're giving. So either 50% off or free worldwide shipping or the sale is ending soon, just some type of incentive. And what works well with hot retargeting is giving them a discount. Now, these are the people that took the action on your store. So you want to give them a little bit of a gift and a little bit of push. So maybe like a discount of 10 to 15% off. The next thing I'll do after this is do creative testing again. So if I have a winning ad set, and I noticed that like, again, it could be diaper and I see that it's doing very well, then I'm going to be able to do very, very easy creative testing. I'll throw this into a brand new campaign. I will duplicate this five times and I will test out new creatives within each one of these ad sets. 
So if I have five ad sets in there and there is that one winning creative at the very beginning, I'm gonna put two more under it. So there should be three in each ad set. So it'll be a total of 15. So if you're duplicating based off of the winning ad set that you already have and you're testing new creatives under that, it's very easy to find winners that way. And what you can do is just duplicate that new winner back into all of your new campaigns. And that is how you do creative testing and stay profitable for a long period of time. What people struggle with a lot of the time is they cannot stay profitable for a long period is because their ads become exhausted. People become exhausted of seeing their ads and the audience don't wanna see the same thing over and over and over again. So if you guys keep hitting these people with new creatives, I'm telling you right now, this is how you make a long-term brand. And it's really easy and very simple as long as you keep putting in the work to find out new videos or new pictures to test. And some easy things that you can just switch around is just using the same creative that did really well and just changing the thumbnail or changing the ad copy or just changing the first three seconds. These are all different variations of test. So lookalikes are going to be tested the same way as interest, but you need to make sure that you have the data in place. So below you guys can see that there's actually a couple guidelines for this. So with video views, when you make a custom audience for video views, it needs to be greater than 5,000 and any other metric besides that needs to be greater than 500. So I will not test a lookalike for view content, initiate checkout, add to cart, view time spent, purchase, anything like that at all, unless it is greater than 500 conversions. So 500 people have taken that action. And if you guys are looking for products to test out right now, go ahead and check out this last video. These products are absolutely crushing it in the market right now. And there's an entire guideline that's gonna show you how to be able to test these at this exact moment. So with the lookalikes, I just go ahead and test them out. So let's just go ahead and say we're gonna start off with the very beginning one, which is 95% video view. We're gonna do a lookalike of one through 5% of video views, and we're gonna test that out. So the first thing we're gonna do is either 95% and 75%, or you can do 95% and then 75% and then you guys can go all the way down there until you can get to purchase. And we'll run these with the same guidelines that we did with the interest targeting. But now remember, you have all these brand new creatives that are willing and ready to crush it for you. And now let's get into scaling. So scaling is very, very easy if you're using CBOs. So one of my methods that I use for scaling a CBO is I will go ahead and find out my five best interests. So the first CBO that I'll test out is a best interest campaign. So let's say that the top five is like diaper, pampers, yada, yada, yada. Just five good interests that are doing really well for you. And now I'm not saying they have one or two purchases. I'm saying they're doing well for you and they probably have about five or more. I will throw these into a brand new CBO campaign and I will go ahead and name it new interest campaign. And it will be testing out the five best ones that you have. So to figure out the budget that you want on these CBOs, what you should be doing is your break even times the amount of creatives that you have within each ad set and the amount of interest that you're about to target. So again, I just said that you should test out five. And if your break even is 15, and let's just say that you have three creatives in it, then your CBO should be at $225. So how I scale this is every single three to four days, if it is doing really well, I will go ahead and increase it about 30 to 50% and vice versa for non-profit CBOs. If they are going to be slowly decreasing, make sure that you go ahead and decrease the budget with that. But the method of this is to be able to scale this out the roof. I love hearing from you guys. I love knowing why you wanna be successful. I love knowing the backstory that you guys have started from. So any feedback that you guys have, make sure you just let me know. Like if you wanna see any videos that are, you haven't seen from my channel yet, make sure to let me know. I appreciate each and every one of you guys and I love my Supreme family on YouTube. And lastly, no interest targeting. Nobody else talks about this on YouTube, but I promise you with the data, it is proven that it has been winning and it has won for me like insane. So what I do is if I have over 500 purchases on this pixel, I will go ahead and run a CBO that is no interest targeting. There's no targeting at it all and I'm allowing Facebook to do its job for it. The pixel has already gathered the information of the customers that way that they move the actions that they take on my stores and understanding the way that they interact with Facebook ads. So it's going to figure out and find similar people. And by having a lot of purchases and a lot of data already established on your store, this is very easy for Facebook to find people who are very similar. So with these no interest campaigns, I'm telling you, if you have a lot of data, they go insane. And I just run them the exact same way that I do my other CBOs. And the winner of the last week's consulting call, do not think I forgot about it, the winner is eHonda. 
E Honda, congratulations on winning this consulting call. Go ahead and hit me up on Instagram at AC underscore Hampton. I can look over your Shopify store. I can look over your ads manager and I can answer any questions that you have. And you won that free shirt. So definitely when you hit me up on Instagram, let me know the size that you want in that checked in t-shirt. And for this week's consulting call, if you guys wanna be able to win that, you have to do four things for me. You need to like this video, smash that like button. You need to subscribe to my channel. You need to comment why you want to be successful and then say AC dropshipping. And lastly, you need to follow me on Instagram at AC underscore Hampton. And to summarize everything, I really appreciate each and every one of you guys for giving me this feedback on my channel and make sure that you guys are coming back because I'm coming out with a new video every single week. So make sure that you turn on those alert options so that you guys can be ready for these videos. This is AC. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm out. Woo. If BG ever wants to sponsor me, go ahead and let me know. Let let your boy know, cause um, it's Fiji way, the Fiji way.